what's going on everybody all day action here and welcome back to another episode so today i'm getting on a trout catching trip for you guys i told you guys on my instagram that i'm gonna try to get out and get on a trout so i'm gonna try to make that happen for you guys today let me show you guys where i'm at real quick so right here by this moving current it's kind of loud so i apologize for the bad audio if you guys can't hear me very well but this is probably one of my favorite trout spots to come to and then right behind me here we got a nice little pool and uh there's some beautiful trout sitting in here this is actually where i caught my pb so maybe we can get on another fish like that big <laughs> that'd be freaking sweet but uh i'm gonna get rigged up real quick and once i get on the gopro i'll kind of show you guys what i'm running with and yeah you guys will see then all right guys so i'm running with a small gold hook like this you guys can see that just a small little hook these trout in this creek they're not very big the biggest i've caught was probably about 15 inches and two pounds which is a pretty decent sized trout but in the fall side that i'm about to fish on i noticed they don't get super big but you know every now and then you'll get a nice big one but anyway i'm gonna show you guys how i tie in my hooks real quick just a basic basic fisherman's knot i wrap around one two three four five six and seven put it through your little loop there there we go i'm using six pound test line on an ultralight shakespeare rod excuse me so that should be a pretty fun day with that i really think it should be these ultralights they're probably one of my favorite rods to catch fish on and it's rated anywhere from let's see two to six pound rating so you can catch a six pound fish on here no problem but that'd be pretty interesting to do but anyway what i'm gonna do now is put a little loop in my knot or in my line here and then i'm gonna take my drop shot weight this isn't really ideal for the kind of fishing that i'm doing but it's what I got, so we're going to make it happen with it. We're going to have to make it work. Weave this right through your little loop there. There we go. And what I do now is I'll take this loop that I have sitting right here, and I'll just wrap it around my finger. One, two. Two times is enough. I usually do three, but that's only if I'm using like a heavier weight. And then boom. The weight just sits there in one spot too. It doesn't slide all around. And I also have some red worms with me today. That's what I'm gonna be using for my bait. So let's get that weaved on the hook. I'll show you guys how I do that as well. So I'll take the worm, start at the top, and I'll just weave it all the way up my hook, just like so, all the way up the shank. There we go. And then I'll take the worm and push it past the eyelet there. So that way it kind of covers it up a little bit more. And there you have it, that's the rig up. So let's get over there and see if we can make something happen. <clears throat> like I said, this is probably one of my favorite spots to fish for trout. And I, this is actually where I caught my first brook trout as well. So maybe we can get on another one. The size limit for brook trout is seven inches out of here. And the size limit for brown trout is eight inches. So we have a pretty decent uh, size range we can go from, which is eight and up. There's no slot limits or anything like that. So let's see what we can do with that first drop. Oh, no way. <laughs> That's funny. I think I got stuck in that wall down there. And a lot of the times that'll happen to me and it feels like a fish is biting, but it wasn't. I got a little excited there. Right here, I noticed the water is trying to push the bait and the line right into that fall. So I'm gonna see if I can't go over on this side and maybe it'll a little bit be a little bit easier for us. And one thing about these trout is they're very skittish. So if you can see them, the chances are they can see you. So I try to be as like stealth as possible when I'm over here. And also, it's not very deep either. I think it's like six feet deep right in front of this wall. It's not like five foot. 
So that's definitely plenty enough depth for these trout to be holding in. But it's hard to tell like if I'm getting a bite because my bait, it'll just hit on the rocks down there. And yeah, it just calls for a little more. Oh, that was a bite for sure. That was definitely a bite. I definitely know that was a bite. I'm gonna make sure I still have my worm because these trout, they're pretty quick at taking them. Yeah, I still got part of my worm. Oop. As you can see, part of it's gone, like half of it's gone. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna try to fix that. Weave it right back up the hook like so. And then we're ready to get back at it. Because it doesn't really take too big of a worm piece to catch these trout. We were actually out here like a few weeks ago catching them on night crawlers. And night crawlers, I've never caught a trout on them, but they were just tearing it up. Let's get it back out there real quick. What I'm gonna do now is actually try to cast it more towards the front of the current. Put it right out there, see if maybe that gives us some better better luck. Oh, there we go, that's a fish. Oh, and it just popped off. Whatever it was, it was small though, so I'm not really too upset about it. No big deal. I'm gonna definitely check my worm though. Yep, I still got it. So I'm gonna just drop it right back down in there. Boom. It's hot today. I think it's like 80 something right now. And I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. I got my sleeves rolled up, but I think I think a long sleeve shirt was definitely not the go. Sorry I started there. I thought I got bit, but yeah, no, a long sleeve was definitely not the go-to for today. It's a little hot for it, but it's all right, I'll just take it off if I have to, no big deal. There we go. That's a better one. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a little guy. I thought that was better. He's eight inches though. Look at that. Just a wee guy. Nah, I'm gonna just let him go. There's no really point in keeping that. The thing about trout, how's it going? The thing about trout is you wanna make sure you wet your hands because they're very delicate fish and they have a coating on their body that helps them survive in this kind of environment. Here, let me try to get down here real quick. All right, set my rod down. Hold on, buddy, I'll let you go. Oh man, that's pretty far in there. Yeah, it's in his throat. But uh, anyway, these trout, they're very delicate fish, so you gotta really be careful when you're handling them because the slime on their body, it helps kind of protect them from any bacteria or any diseases. Right, let's get them back in there. Oh. Yeah, he's not wanting to swim off good. He might be stunned or that hook, it was pretty deep in his throat, so I don't know if he's gonna make it or not for sure. Let me show you guys real quick. The sad thing about this is he's definitely undersized, and I don't wanna keep a trout that's too small, cause, you know, DNR will be on my butt like crazy. Come on, buddy. Come on. All right, so he swam back off. He just went straight down underneath this rock, so I think he's gonna be just fine. Thank you, Jesus. First trout of the day. It was a small one, but that don't matter. That's still a fish. Still happy about that. All right, let's go get a new worm on here. I'm trying not to fall off of this hill there. All right, so just like before, I got it weaved right up the shank of my hook and same amount of weight. So let's see if we can't make that happen again. And hopefully this time they don't swallow it. I always hate it when the fish do that because I'm the type of person that's like a catch and release and I'll keep sometimes, but a trout that small, I'm definitely not always wanting to keep. So he, I'm glad he swam off at least. That makes me happy. 
like I said before, this little pool right here, it's actually where I caught my personal best brown trout. So you never know, there could be more monsters just lurking in here. So I'm gonna give her a couple good casts and see what's going on in here. I gotta be very careful though, because as you guys can see right down there, there's a log going straight across and right in front of me going in straight in front of me like this there's like cement of some sort and i get snagged up on that all the time and it's just a hassle having to retie every time you get snagged up but that's what you kind of get yourself into when you're river fishing like this there's just snags all over the place yeah i don't think there's anybody home Let's go ahead and try back over here now. This is where I got bit like three times. So I think they're just kind of pulled up on this one side. The current kind of pushes like this. So they might be just getting pushed around. And that current is pretty strong. And a lot of the fish in here, they're not super big. So probably just get thrown around really easy. But trout, trout, salmon, any kind of salmon or trout char or whatever they're really strong fish so they're used to this kind of environment you got a dude waiting in the water down there that's awesome i think i just got snagged up again darn it my line broke so i'm gonna get retied on real quick no biggie like i said before you kind of get yourself into this if you're river fishing there's lots and lots of different snags so it's kind of something that you got to keep in mind when you're out here doing this kind of thing because yeah just make sure you got plenty of hooks as you can see i'm getting kind of low but i still got plenty of these little gold hooks if i don't drop it plenty of these little gold guys and they seem to do the trick with these trout so i'm gonna keep using them and if i end up running out i'll just run to the hardware store real quick and grab some more so just like before Put it right through the eyelet a lot of you probably already know how to tie a hook i'm sure you do but just for those new people out there that are just getting into fishing this is how i'd start doing it and there's multiple different ways that you can tie on a hook but for now i'm gonna show you this way and i call it it's a basic fisherman's knot as a lot of people would call it so what i do is i put it through the eyelet as you can see bring your main line straight through like that parallel with the other line and you wrap it one two three four five six and seven now you don't always have to wrap it seven times i wrap it seven just because that's my favorite number you can go from anywhere from more to less it doesn't really matter as long as you're not strong enough to hold a fish that's really all you really want to look for and then you just take it and since you're not shut you want to make sure you get something kind of like that you don't want it to be all balled up and then you take your tag line right there and just cut it off I bite mine I don't recommend biting it because it's really not healthy for your teeth but I've been doing it for years which isn't a good thing but that's the way I do it I just lost one you guys and it was definitely a keeper man that sucks I still got my worm so let's see if I can't get back on it I don't know if it felt the hook or not after the trout bite ones they usually don't come back but you never really know I think they're just kind of piled up in there right now because that was literally the second bite I got on that drop. First off, I cast it out more towards the front of the current and I had a smaller bite. But then I started reeling up and then I got bit again and it felt like I was just getting caught in the current. That's what I'm saying is like when it gets taken away into that current, you can't really tell it's hard unless you see your line moving over there. But throw it back out and see what we can do. I had the GoPro off too. So that's kind of a bummer. I'm trying to conserve on some battery. All right, now I'm gonna open my bale and let it run out. Close it back up. See if that intrigues a bite. I'm kind of wondering now if that one I just hooked into, I didn't get it on camera, but I'm really wondering if that was a brown trout or not. The colors on it were way different than what I usually see. 
and that one day I hooked into that brook trout, I was just thinking like, okay, it's, it's kind of a more silver brown trout, but when I got it up, I noticed the pattern on the back of it was different, and the red fins, the red uh, adipose fin and the two side fins were red, and that's when I instantly knew it got me so hyped. Bring it kind of next to this wall here. There we go. Now I'm gonna just let it sit right there. See what picks it up. There we go. Oh, and I dropped it. That's a bummer. He wasn't very big either. Cause like I said, the trout in here, they don't grow to be super huge. So I'm not expecting to catch a giant right now. They must just be stacked up in here right now. We did have a big storm a few days ago. Oh, that was a bite. Either something ran into my line or that was a bite. Yep, that was a bite. It took my worm. Darn. Yeah, he's totally robbed me. I'm going to take this last little piece and just toss it in the water there. And go get a new worm on. There must just be a bunch of small ones hanging out in there right now. I'm throw it right back down in the same spot where I got bit. See if maybe it'll come back for it. Alright. I'm going to drop it a little closer to that fall right there. Right in front of the wall. And see if I can't pick it up right there. That's where I got bit the first time. And I apologize if I'm not talking a lot. I'm really trying to focus on the fishing. And also another thing, oh shoot. I might have to walk down there and get that. I don't want to lose another setup. Please don't shoot back at me. Yeah, I'm gonna walk down there real quick. I'm very determined to get this back. Oh boy, hopefully I don't spook any fish. right on this plant here. I'm actually going to rip that out of there just so that way I don't get caught on it again in the future. Oh man, now my feet are all wet. I'm going to just go without shoes for now so I can let my feet dry. Alright, let's get back up. Drop it back in there. And hopefully they're still hanging out down there. I hope I didn't cause too much racket. I might shut off the GoPro again soon because I don't have a full battery. So I want to make sure I can record for you guys and keep some camera life going. So I'll probably get back to you guys when I got a fish on. All right, I got one here, guys. This one's better. Definitely. Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah. Look at that, guys. Let's hurry up and get him over here to the grass real quick. I don't want to drop him. He's definitely a keeper. This one's coming home with me. So I'm going to get him put on the stringer in my bag real quick. We got our fish put on the stringer now. That's such a beautiful fish. I got his gills cut and I'm gonna let him sit here in the cold water so that way he don't get hot. And yeah, just let him chill there. And I'm not really sure where I'm gonna tie this off at. I'll probably have to do it on like a plant or something. Obviously he's not going anywhere. But man, that is so awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those two catches today. All right, but we'll leave him there. And he's he's gonna be all right. Nothing's gonna take him, nothing's gonna happen. So let's go get back out there again. That guy swallowed the hook too, but I recovered it. It wasn't too far in there and it didn't puncture a gill. So even if we didn't want to keep that guy, I could have let him go. But he was definitely coming home for the whole skillet. I don't got a smoker. But in the future, 
definitely look forward to me having a uh, smoker because this fall I plan to get to the St. Joe Pier again and hopefully get on some lake trout because they tend to spawn right next to the pier and there's a YouTube channel that I watch and they kind of gave me the, all the tips and tricks on how to catch them so we're definitely going to make that happen for you guys definitely no doubt about it man I wish there was a way that these worms they didn't get your fingers so dirty when you grab them because now my shorts got worm dirt on them <laughs> that's okay part of fishing getting dirty getting bloody getting sweaty getting bit by bugs it's all part of the old ordeal that's a beautiful dragonfly all right let's get back out there and see if we can't get on another one i'd like to get two at least that'd be nice and where i caught them was literally right in front of this wall here i keep getting bit right here in the same spot there's another one that was fast oh he fell off see what i mean though you guys they're literally just piled up in here right now that was so fast i literally just dropped it in and he was about the same size as the last one that's awesome such a wonderful day it's getting kind of late and i don't know if the gopro's picking up the picture very well I notice when the sun goes down, it starts to get kind of bad quality, but I think I'll stick around a little longer for you guys and maybe another like hour. And if I don't get anything on, then I'll just call it and head on back to the house and cook up this fish for you. I don't know what happened. I think the GoPro just shut off on me for some reason. It might be getting too hot. I need to get an upgrade camera. So if you guys would like to donate to my cash app, I'll leave it linked below so I can get a new GoPro. No, I'm just kidding. I don't expect you guys to do that. That's that's all my responsibility there, but I'm definitely in the works of trying to get a new camera. The Hero 7, it's, it's doing just fine for now, but I'd like to get something with a little better quality, and so that way I can get more angles for you guys. That'd be really cool. I'm going to let it sit there for a few more seconds and then I'll probably cast it back out into the front of the current. Oh man, I just had a spider on my leg. I don't really mind spiders, but when they're on me, I definitely don't want them on me. That is definitely not my kind of thing. Alright, let's throw it out there. I was out here with my buddy a few weeks ago, and I may have mentioned it already, but he hooked into a big brown trout. Like, it was definitely definitely at least 15 16 inches give or take all we've seen was just the tail of it coming up this fall right here but sadly i don't think he had a good hook set on it because it just popped right off but at least we know they're in here that's a good sign last spring as well actually i was over here on that side fishing and i was using a green spinner and the trout that i hooked into he was giant and i'm talking the biggest trout that i've ever seen in my life besides that like a hatchery or something and this dude was just massive i couldn't believe it i almost had him up but i don't think i had a proper hook set on him because the spinner it had tiny little treble hooks on it so i don't think it got all the way into his lip and these trout they got some gnarly teeth so their jaw bones are probably pretty tough and pretty hard to get hooked into that's probably why i lose a lot of them even when they're small, they're pretty tough dudes. All right, you guys. So I decided to just go grab my worms. And instead of walking up and down this hill to go get a new one every time, because I keep casting into this current right here and something keeps taking my bait. I feel the taps, but I have no clue how big it is. So I'm gonna get another worm rigged on real quick. And as soon as I get it hooked, you guys will know for sure. All right, let's get another worm rigged on real quick. All right. Close these guys up. They tend to be some escape artists, so try to close my worms up as much as possible. Because if not, I'll turn back around and those guys will just be trying to get out and stuff. And yeah, definitely don't want that. All right, put her back out there. 
Hopefully we can stick into this guy this time. Got him. Oh yeah, that's a tiny little dude. Look at that. Just a tiny little trout. And I think that's the one I kept taking my worm. I'm gonna wet my hand real quick. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. I'm gonna let you go. Don't worry. Yeah, right in the corner of the mouth. Came out perfectly. Look at that beautiful dude. All right, buddy. See you later. Thanks for the bite. Oh, yeah. He was ready to go. <laughs> That's awesome, guys. Definitely not keeper size, but that was still cool. I'm going to get another worm rig down there real quick, and then I'm going to cast right over here a few times. And if I don't get any bites, I'll probably just call it and end up going home and cook up that fish real quick. Get her tossed right there. All right, guys, so that pretty much does it for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and head back to the house. So I ended up actually sticking around for a little while longer, as you can see, the sun's starting to go down, but I didn't catch any more trout, sadly, but I did hook into a largemouth bass. And once I got it up, I didn't measure it or weigh it or anything like that, but I'd give or take around 13, 14 inches and two pounds. So that's, that's pretty sweet. I wasn't expecting that at all. I know sometimes they'll hold in this current back here, but that wasn't on the list for today, but uh, yeah, I didn't get on the GoPro either. So I won't be able to show you guys sadly. And I didn't take any pictures, but it's in here. And pretty soon I'm gonna get on some largemouth fishing for you guys and hope you guys stay tuned for that. But anyways, I'm gonna get to the house right now and I'll see you guys when I'm in the kitchen. Alrighty guys, so I'm in the kitchen now and I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking on this trout. Let me show you guys what I'm using real quick for seasoning. I got some lemon pepper and this is another great seasoning, another one of my favorites. And then I'm just gonna go with some salt. Can't beat that. So let me show you guys what I did so far. Uh, I didn't want the pan to get all sticky and the trout stick to it. So I, get, I went ahead and I rubbed some butter on there. And then I also put a nice slice of butter inside of it. So what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and put some of this lemon pepper on. Do a little sprinkle over the top there. Be nice and friendly with that. And go ahead and flip her on over. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Get it right in those slits. I put slits in the side so that way it could kind of absorb more of the flavor and so that way it doesn't just kind of arc or whatever, maybe help it cook evenly too. And then, yeah, I'm gonna leave the inside actually with nothing. Hi, buddy. Hi. Come here, you wanna say hi to the camera? Come here. Say hi, Apollo. Little boy. You know, you smell the fish eat on my fingers? I'd let you try it, but there's already spices on it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some salt on now. Just a little bit of salt. You don't want to overpower it. Then I'm gonna flip her back over. I guess I could have did this with the salt and the lemon pepper at the same time, but you know, it still works. So I got the butter in there already and I'm gonna go ahead and set this to sun bake. And I'm gonna set it to 350. Boom, it's at 350 now. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this guy open and place her in. And for trout, these smaller trout, they tend to cook kind of quick. Just like the last time the bluegill it was cooking really fast for us. But I'm going to go ahead and plug this in before I forget. And now we set the timer to 10 minutes. Just like before, I'll set it to 10 minutes and then I'll just come and kind of check on it every so often. All right, I'm going to go ahead and check it. I came over here to look and I noticed that it was starting to smoke. I don't know if it's just the spices on the pan burning. It looks like it, yeah, it looks like it is. And that's exactly why I laid the butter down just because I had a feeling it was gonna do that. Let me check it real quick. See, that's, that's already really close to being done. I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. I'm gonna flip it so that way it can cook a little more evenly. That, I'll probably give that a few more minutes and then it's gonna be done. 
pop it back in there. The timer's got, let's see, it's about halfway through the cycle, so probably about five more minutes left. All right, y'all. So I think our fish is just about done. And I'm so ready for this because I am hungry. All right, let's check her out real quick. It's nice and glowing red in there. I apologize for the bad lighting. It's it's getting dark outside, so all I got is the inside lights. Pull that out real quick and let's give it the good old check. See if it's coming right off the bone or not. Oh yeah, that's done. That's definitely done. I'm gonna check the other side real quick. The other side was what was flaking first, so I'm sure it is. Oh yeah, that's definitely done. The skin's falling right off of it. All right, I'm gonna get this put on a plate real quick and let me grab the plate actually and shut this off too. Ding. All right, the trout is ready. I don't wanna burn my hands here. Um, let's see if I can just transfer it with the fork, hopefully. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking so good. All right, now let's go ahead and finish off some of this fish before I end off the video. I'm gonna try the skin. The skin is also another really good part. I don't know how a lot of you feel about it, but I love it. Hmm. It's actually pretty good. Lemon pepper on there held pretty good. Let's see, it'll flake off this meat right off the bone. That's a perfect bite right there, guys. Oh, and I just dropped it on the table. What? That's a bummer. All right, let's try that again. Hopefully we don't drop this one. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Hmm. Like I said, this is probably one of my favorite fish to eat of all time. I love bluegill and I love walleye and perch, but there's just something about trout and salmon. It's just awesome. I hope you guys enjoy this video so far. Enjoying it as much as I am making it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. And let me know down in the comments what you think. Like, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah.